So good morning. It is the first day of digital learning, distance learning, whatever it's called. So today we're going to be doing some factoring, uh, getting ready to solve quadratic equations. And so I'm going to try to be as efficient as possible with time so you don't have to watch these really long videos. So here we go. So today is the 16th. So 3, 16, 20. Our mission today is to solve quadratics by graphing. Sorry, factoring. So we're just gonna do some factoring first and then we'll do some solving equations later. Uh, so there are four types of factoring. And number one is GCF. We're gonna do that one first. Number two, uh, just because I think it's pretty easy, is the difference of squares. Diff of squares. And I know you all remember that from algebra one and two. Three is your basic trinomial. And four is trinomial with a not equal to one. The leading coefficient is not equal to one. This is the most complicated one, number four. So let's do some problems using the GCF. And remember when we're doing GCF, we're just looking for the greatest common factor, the number or variable that goes into both or all three or all four terms, however many you have. So here is our first one. We're doing GCF and we are looking at 10x plus 10. And so when we're doing the GCF, we're looking for the number in this case that they have in common. And obviously the number they have in common is 10. So we're gonna factor out a 10, and then we ask ourselves this key question here. 10 times what makes 10x? And obviously the answer is x, and then 10 times what makes 10? And that is plus one. And we remember that factoring is really finding things that multiply together to make a product. So the two things that we have that multiply together are 10 and x plus one to make 10x plus 10. These are the two factors. So let's do another one. So this had a common number uh, where it was pretty obvious what the number was. This one is not quite as obvious because they don't have the same number, but they do have a number that goes into both. So the number that obviously goes into both eight and 16 is eight. And so we factor out an eight, and then again, ask ourselves the, the questions. Eight times what makes eight x? And that's x. And eight times what makes 16, in this case, negative 16, it's gonna be negative two. And our factoring there is done. So we have several others. So just so that you don't think that all of our factoring involves two terms, here comes a three term bit of factoring with some variables. So we got 12x plus 16y minus 20z. And again, we look for the look at the variables first, and we realize that we have an x, a y, and a z. None of those are in common. So then we look at the numbers: 12, 16, and 20, and we ask ourselves, is there a number that goes into all four, all three of those? And the answer is yes, and it's four. And then we can again we go through the same series of questions as before. 4 times what makes 12x? That's 3x. 4 times what makes 16y? That's 4y. And 4 times what makes negative 20z? That's negative 5z. And there are our factors. So um, now it comes to factoring with variables. So I want to do a little quick demonstration here uh, regarding variables. And here I have uh, my little demonstration table. And on my demonstration table, we have two piles of books. One pile has two books. One pile has three books. And when we're factoring with variables, generally we have uh, powers higher than uh, one. So we're gonna look at these as, and we're gonna think of this as, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. So the question here is gonna be, I wanna take out the same number of books from both piles, and I wanna take out as many books as I can. This pile has two, this pile has three, so we can take out two books from each pile. 
and that will leave us with no books in the first pile and one book left in the second pile. And what we're going to do is we're going to expand this into thinking about this as x squared, two x's, two books, and x cubed, three x's or x to the third power and three books. So let's see what that looks like over here. So we have x to the second plus x to the third. And here is our pile of two books, and here is our pile of three books, and as we just decided over there with our little book demonstration, we're trying to take out as many x's as we can from both piles, from both terms, and we want to take out the same number of x's from both. And here we see that we have two, here we see that we have three, and obviously we can take out two from each pile of x's here. So we're going to factor out an x squared, and then again we just go through the same questions we did before x squared times what makes x squared, and obviously that answer is 1, and x squared times what makes x cubed, and that answer of course is x. And again, these are our two factors. Remember, factors are things that multiply together to make a product. Now, of course, we wouldn't want to just stop with variables. We should combine the numbers and the variables because, because we can. So let's do to x squared and 7x. So again, let's take a look here and see what they have in common. They both have x's, and in fact, this one has a pile of two x's. This one has a pile of one x's. And we want to factor out as many x's as we can, and we decide that we can factor out one x. And so again, the question, x times what makes x squared? It's x, and x times what makes 7x? And that's 7 our factors. Uh, and let's jump down to something a little more challenging, where we're really looking at numbers and variables together. So we got 3x squared minus 12x. And as we look at this, we can look at the numbers first. It doesn't really matter, variables and numbers first, but let's look at the numbers first. And we look at the 3 and the 12 and we ask ourselves, so what number goes into both 3 and 12? And the answer is obviously 3. And then we're back to the x's. Uh, we have a pile of two x's, we have a pile of one x's. How many can we take out of each pile? And the answer is one x. And then again, same questions. Three x times what is three x squared? And the answer is x. Three x times what makes negative 12? And that's minus four. And there are your two factors for three x squared minus 12 x. Now let's look at something that is looks a little trickier but really isn't. Because all we have to remember is that pi is just a number. So let's look at pi r squared plus pi r l. So as we look here again, uh, this is very actually similar to this problem. Remembering pi is just a number, and we see that there's a pi here and a pi here, so we can take out a pi. And we see there's two r's there and one r there. We can take out an r. And then again, we ask ourselves, pi times r times what makes our pi r squared? We need an r. And pi times r times what makes pi times r times l? Obviously, we need an l. I'd ask if there are any questions, but you can't ask me any questions, so I'm not going to ask. Uh, so let's go to uh, some even higher powers of x. So let's do x cubed uh, minus 5x to the fourth. And as again we're looking here, we have a pile of 3x's and we have a pile of 4x's. We're trying to pull out as many x's from both as we can and pull out the same number. And so we see that we can pull out 3 from both of these. And the rule of thumb, of course, is going to be, as you've already figured out, that if you're trying to figure out how many x's to pull out of two or three or four uh, terms, we just look to the lowest power of x or y or z or whichever variable. So we get x cubed times one and x cubed times negative five x, and we are there. All right, and again, lest you think that all of our factoring involves two terms, let's make sure we have three terms here. And uh, let's do uh, 
14x to the fifth minus 12x to the eighth plus 4x cubed. So again, we're going to think of this in, with the numbers. We look at 14 and 12 and 4, and we recognize that 2 goes into all of those. And we look at x to the fifth, x to the eighth, and a pile of x to the third, or pile of three x's. So we ask ourselves, how many x's can I pull out of all of these piles of x's here? And again, we just go with the rule of thumb, the fewest number of x's or the lowest power, so we got x cubed. So 2x cubed times what makes 14x to the fifth? We need a seven, and we have three x's. We got five x's, we need two more. And we're doing the same thing here. Two times what makes negative 12? and that's negative six, and x cubed times what makes x to the eighth? We need five more x's, and we got two x cubed times what makes four x cubed, and clearly two times that makes four x cubed. And there we have a five term example. And then, just for fun, our last example on GCF, and I'll have an assignment for you on that, is 20x to the third y squared plus 16 x to the second y to the sixth. Just because I could throw in two variables, I did. So we got, uh, again, the numbers. We look at 20 and 16, and we recognize that 4 goes into both of those. We got x cubed and we got x squared. The rule of thumb is lowest power of x, x squared. We got y squared. We got y to the sixth. Lowest power is y squared. And then we ask the questions. Four times what makes 20? That's five. x squared times what makes x cubed? That's x. y squared times what makes y squared? Well, we already got two y's. We ended up with two y's. We don't need any more y's, so we don't add any. Then we're on to the next term. Four times what makes 16? And that's a four x squared times what makes x squared? Again, we don't need any more x's. y squared times what makes y to the sixth? And that's y to the fourth. And we are done. So here's the way we're going to do this today. Uh, we're going to, uh, I'm going to give you a, a small assignment on this. Uh, and your job is to do the assignment, take a picture of it, and then post it on Classroom or, or give it to me on Classroom. So you could perhaps, if you wanted to, take a picture, uh, send it to yourself, put it in a Google Docs, and then, uh, and then submit the Google Docs on Classroom. But everything I'd like to see uh, is on Classroom. Um, I suppose you could try to type this if you wanted to. Uh, that doesn't seem to me to be the most efficient way to do it, but if you wanted to type it, that works for me as well. Um, just whatever way you, you get it done, please make sure you can turn it in on Google Classroom if you have any questions about that. Obviously, shoot me an email, and I'll uh, do my best to sort it out. Or if I can't figure it out, I'll talk to Nathan. He'll get it figured out. So anyway, um, hope you guys are all doing okay with uh, the whole virus thing and being home. Uh, I know for some of you that may be a little challenging because, um, you know, being at school is kind of the thing that we usually do, and we're not doing the thing we usually do, and that may be a little odd for some of you. But we'll get through this. So I will. Um, I'll have another video for you soon.